All right, this is our second set of notes for our Unit 7 classification unit. Uh, we're going to look at pages 3 and 4 of our notes now. Okay, so we just talked about the uh, field of taxonomy where a scientist will classify living things and give them their scientific names, uh, the combination of the genus and the species. Now, in order to um, study new organisms and identify them, uh, organisms that that are being studied, taxonomists have a special uh, have special guides or tools to help them identify organisms. Um, one of these tools, uh, one type of tool that tax taxonomists use is uh, something called a dichotomous key. So, as it says, a dichotomous key is an aid that is used to identify organisms, and it consists of an of the answers to a series of questions. So, a dichotomous key. Basically, uh, what it is is a series of statements, usually paired statements, that are uh, arranged in pairs, as it says, uh, and they're usually given numbers uh, such as 1A and 1B. And as a scientist is uh, studying a, an organism, they're trying to figure out uh, what organism it is that they're actually looking at or they're trying to um, classify it. They will go through the dichotomous key and they'll look at the paired statements and determine which statement best describes the organism that they are looking at. So the investigator chooses the statement that best describes the organism, and then they follow the directions that go with that statement. So each statement will have a direction uh, to follow if, uh, if you, that's the, the um, statement that you think best describes the organism. It will tell you uh, what to do next, and, and usually it tells you um, to go to another statement, or it may identify the organism for you. Now, by working through the statements, as directed, the name of the organism is eventually discovered. And this is a tool that we will practice using in class uh, a few different times. We may even try to make our own dichotomous key. It's a very useful tool for uh, the study of living things and classifying living things. Okay, so here we have an example of a, di a simple dichotomous key for um, some mammals. And we'll take a look at this right now. So... We have uh, two uh, pictures of two different mammals up here at the top. There's one here on the left and one on the right. Well, we'll take a look at the um, animal that's on the upper left here and uh, go through this series of questions and maybe you can uh, get an idea of how to use a dichotomous key. And we'll practice this in class uh, several times. So, uh, so the first series of statements that we look at is uh, number one. So number one, A says, this mammal flies. Its hand forms a wing. And B says, this mammal does not fly, its hand does not form a wing. Well, clearly, when we look at uh, the, this animal right up here, uh, this is not a flying mammal. So this mammal does not fly is a better statement. And what this tells us to do says, go to step two. So we go to step two, and we read our two statements. So we see 2A says, this mammal has no hair on its tail. And step B says this mammal has hair on its tail. So if we look at this mammal, we can see that it does have hair on its tail. So 2B, again, is our best statement. And we look at the directions there, and it says go to step 4. That means we skip step 3 and we go to step 4 right here. Step 4, A, says this mammal has a black mask across its face. And 4B says the mammal does not have a black mask across its face. And so if we look at this mammal up here, look at the face, it does not have a black mask across its face. So right here, it tells us to go to step six. So we st skip step five and go to step six. And 6A says this mammal is brown, brown and has a white underbelly. Uh, 6B says this mammal is not brown and does not have a white underbelly. Well, if we look at this mammal up here, it is brown, and it does, in fact, appear to have a white underbelly. So it looks like 6A is the better answer, and that tells us to go to step 7. So now we go to step 7. 7A says this mammal has a long furry tail that is black on the tip, and 7B says this mammal has a long tail that has little fur. Okay, so if we, we look again at our and what we're studying, and we see right here, it has a long furry tail, and there is indeed a black tip. So 7A looks like the better choice. And if we go over here, we see that now we don't have to go any further. We have identified our organism as a long-tail weasel. 
And that's uh, basically how a dichotomous key works. It's a very useful tool. It's easy to learn how to use, um, but like I said, it is something that's very useful to, for identifying organisms. Okay, now just briefly, uh, we're back here at uh, page 772, because I want to remind you about uh, what's in the beginning of your notes. In the beginning of your notes, we have our eight classification levels. We have domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Well, right now, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the kingdoms. So that's why I'm back here. I just want you to see that that's what we're doing right now as we're looking at um, this level, this, the kingdom classification level. Oh, and actually I did I misspoke. We are going to talk about the domains first here. So here are the domains, which is the highest level. So first we will talk about the domains, uh, which is the most inclusive, least specific level. And there are there are three domains. We have domain bacteria, domain archaea, and domain eukarya. Okay, so these are three domains. All living things that exist fall into one of these three domains. So each domain includes one or more kingdoms, which we're, we will talk about here in a second. Um, we look at these, we see domain bacteria has one kingdom, and the name of that kingdom is eubacteria. Domain archaea has one kingdom, and the name of that kingdom is archibacteria. So actually, these words here should be familiar to you. We have seen these in uh, previ previous units. But uh, w what this also should um, make apparent to you, you see eubacteria and archibacteria. What that means is that the first two domains, bacteria and archaea, these uh, both contain bacteria. So in other words, they contain prokaryotes, single-celled organisms. And what that means is that all other living things that are not bacteria must be in this domain, domain 3, uh, eukarya. That is in fact true. So now we'll take a look at uh, domain eukarya. So domain, domain eukarya has four kingdoms in it. Those kingdoms are kingdom protista, kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae, and kingdom animalia. So uh, this means that all total there are six kingdoms. We have kingdom eubacteria, kingdom archibacteria, kingdom protista, kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae, and kingdom animalia. So we've got a few lists here. You should know um, uh, for uh, future exams and that sort of thing, you should know the three domains. You should know the three domains. Um, you should know the six, six kingdoms. And which kingdoms are in which domains? Which kingdoms? are in which domains. Okay, so th these are, there's several lists here. Now some of them uh, are sort of um, nested lists, like uh, this list of the four kingdoms. These are the four kingdoms in the domain eukarya. So you, I could see a question asking that. Hey, what are the four kingdoms in the domain, in domain eukarya, for example? Okay, this little picture right here might be a little helpful. You see our three domains. We have bacteria, Archaea and Eukarya. There's our three, our three domains, and uh, the arrows coming down point to the kingdoms that are in those three domains. So, this is maybe graphically a helpful way to look at this. So, domain bacteria has one kingdom. That's Eubacteria. Domain Archaea has Archaebacteria, and domain Eukarya has four: Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. And so these are the, the six biological kingdoms. Now as we move on to talk about the, uh, the different domains and, and the different kingdoms, I do want to point out this picture right here. Um, uh, this shows a picture of hot spring at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, the water is very close to boiling. It's 90 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius is boiling. This is too hot for almost anything to live here except for these. Uh, it does contain archibacteria that, are, that can live in this near boiling hot water. And, and so the archibacteria are one of, our, one of our six biological kingdoms. Okay, so now moving on here, we look at our, our two kingdoms of, of bacteria. Bacteria 
are extremely small single-celled organisms and they are all prokaryotes. All prokaryotes are bacteria. We've already talked about prokaryotes uh, a little bit in this class this year. But prokaryotes, they are, again, once again, they're single-celled organisms whose cells do not have a nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. And generically, all prokaryotes are called bacteria, sort of as a common name. Now, um, whoops, now erase my lines here. Okay, now bacteria are divided into two different kingdoms, as we just mentioned. The kingdoms are archibacteria and eubacteria. Now, we take a look at archibacteria. This is a kingdom made up of bacteria that live in extreme environments. And so, archibacteria can live in environments, like the picture I just showed you of the hot springs at Yellowstone National Park. They live in environments where most other life forms cannot survive because it's uh, too extreme. Uh, sometimes they'll live in hot springs. Uh, uh, places like the Dead Sea or Great Salt Lake where the salt content is so great that nothing can survive. It kills fish, kills bacteria, kills plants, but these archibacteria can survive there. Um, now, eubacteria is a kingdom that contains prokaryotes that are not in the kingdom archibacteria. And so we've got eubacteria live in soil, water, and even on the inside of the human body. The eubacteria are much more numerous than archibacteria. They live almost anywhere. They're extremely abundant organisms. So most disease-causing bacteria that we know about are, are in this uh, kingdom of eubacteria. However, there are lots and lots of um, harmless or even helpful bacteria within the kingdom of eubacteria as well. So uh, examples of some disease-causing bacteria in the kingdom of eubacteria, we have E. coli, uh, streptococcus, which is the, the bacteria that causes strep throat, um, staphylococcus is a bacteria that causes a staph infection. And so over here, um, you can see um, this is a microscopic view of the head of a pin. And what we can see is we see bacteria that are on the head of that pin. All right, and that's going to be it for our second uh, set of lectures, our second video for chat or for unit. Seven, our classification unit.